Woo, in the nude, yeah, thriller city. Ooh, Jack Thriller, yeah. We creep in, Snoop Dogg to the left, Jack Thriller to the right. JackThriller.com, do it all night, hit the website, hit us up real quick. If you're trying to get hooked up with a bad super bitch. That's right! Go find the last time before I make change. <laughs> and we back. Thank you, T-Rex. Oh, man, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be my neighbor? Um, We got a wonderful show today and everything. I, I got some really, really um terrific... Uh, co-host uh, here, but, but first of all, how y'all doing? Let me hear y'all make some noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's all yeah. right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, let me introduce everybody real quick. First, the ladies first. Ooh, ladies first. Ladies first. Ooh. I, uh, she is one of my really good friends of mine and everything. I came over to her radio station. That's right. I said the girl got her own radio station, man. Come on. Uh, uh, uh. TKO Radio. TKO Radio. It'll knock you right on out. She's beautiful. She's fine. She's talented. She know her shit, man. Y'all give it up for Chelsea Speaks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this next young lady, she is a relationship guru, has a wonderful podcast called One Thing About It. Um, she is also gorgeous, fine, and super intelligent. Mm -hmm. Huh, you can't stump her. Y'all give it up for a money talk. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. My player partner, my homeboy, my first cousin. Uh, you know, one of the, the uh, uh, one of the people that I I, I lean on. He's a really strong guy. Uh, he's also an innovator. He made history, man. Beyonce did his dance. Michael Jackson did his dance. Man, he was the first person to ever. A uh, 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 patent a dance. They, it ain't never been done before. He made history, man. And um, you know he's the first person to goddamn uh, blow up behind me. Hold on, no, he blew up before me. This nigga was the first famous nigga in the family. <laughs> <laughs> and he younger than me too. That nigga beat me. That little nigga beat me, man. Y'all give it up for the Godfather of Crank, get uh, little Playboy. Hey, 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 what's up, y'all? What up? What up? What up? Hey. I got my homeboy in the house, my my cousin, okay. my cousin in the house today. You know what I'm saying? Yo, this nigga right here, he cooler than a goddamn uh, polar bear's toenail. Oh, he got one of the finest interview shows that you'll ever see in your life. He done had everybody that's anybody on there, man. You know, he out works at, at work that got, I don't know if you still work there or you no, work there. No, that's a story there. in itself, too. Okay, okay I want to hear that. I want to hear it. We going to yeah, get to it. Yeah, yeah. ATL's own Beehive. Oh, sh well, Beehive by itself. <laughs> yes. By itself, okay. So, that's over. That's right. You didn't got too big for that. Well, no, man. You know, I ain't never even told this story before, Jack. So Hold on, it's about to happen right over here. You about to get an exclusive about it, right. sir. Yeah, Lay man. Lay it on me, man. It was uh this how you started 2022, show. man. We was coming off of COVID. And uh I got a call from corporate and they said, uh, sir, we need you to get the jab. And I told them that uh I wasn't about to get the jab. Come and on. And they told bro. me that uh well you ain't got a job no more, sir. Wow. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, that's how it went. I mean, it was one of those things to where you know it was all the way from the top down, everybody had to get it at that time because we were coming out of COVID. It was real in the field. Mm -hmm. But for me, I never really spoke out about it and against it like that too tough because if you look at my podcast, it's two ATL hats mm -hmm. on that table. Yeah. And that's yeah. from a guy named Big Lim. Big Lim. Uh, that's Big my Lim. Dog. Big Lim. And Big Lim passed from COVID. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So with Big that, Lim didn't get the shot though. I don't know if he got the shot or not. I don't know. I don't know. No, I know he, he didn't get it. My God. I, so, I know for a fact he didn't get that shit because me and him were arguing about it when he was dropping me off some hats at the house. Exactly. So with that being said, I didn't want to be the one to be raising Cain about nobody not getting it. 
Uh -huh. Because it was a personal decision. It was like, you know what, I'm not going to put what I feel on you. If that's what you want to do, got that's you. fine with you. And I ain't got nothing against it. I, I still don't got nothing against it. But got it was you. just something that me and my family, we weren't about to do. God damn. You okay. Know? So you, you, what about when your family was saying, hey, uh, husband, uh, hey, uh, daddy, um, I think we need to get that COVID shot. What you say? <laughs> hey, you get that shit, you got to get the fuck out of here. Hey, well, see, it wasn't like that. You know, it was a lot of pressure from my mama, Jack. You know, mama likes to call you. Don't, don't, you gonna die. You gonna die. You better get this shot. Why you not getting it? Why you not getting it? You better get it. You better get it. I like, mama, I ain't doing it. I just don't feel right about it, you know. Mm. And, uh, I mean, I was able to make it through COVID and be healthy. I, I can't say the same thing for everybody else. I know everybody in my house survived it. And everybody's doing well, you know, but uh, it was just something that I didn't feel like for me. With it, when it came to a job and my personal body, a job already has control of your day and your time, okay? But I just didn't feel comfortable giving them control of my body. You see what I'm saying? Don't tell me that I can't work a job because I haven't gotten a shot. This is my body. I got to live with whatever I put into my body long exactly. after this job is over with. You see what I'm saying? Now, if I knew that I was going to be working for the rest of my life and I was going to be taken care of for the rest of my life and my family going to be taken care of for the rest of their lives, then that would have been something that I would have considered. But with that not being the case, it was like, you know what? I have to take my chances. It was a wild thing, Jack. Wild thing, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody in your household catch COVID? We all caught it. Oh, really? Yeah. How was we your symptoms? How was your symptoms? Were they severe? It was a cold. Mild it was like cold. a flu. It was like you catch the flu and your nose stopped up and you're looking crazy. Just I caught like COVID a, before too. Yeah. Once. Well, I, I got the, I got the, uh, I got oh, the shot. Okay, uh, so my yeah. symptoms, I didn't really have no symptoms. Yeah. I you just didn't know. I just had you a back ache. Know. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it just felt like the flu went through the house because you know I got four kids in the house. So I mean, when they start okay. school, somebody's getting sick at the beginning of every year and it's going to fly through the whole house. So. Actually, you know, I think we probably had it before it was even announced as well, because mm -hmm. I remember all of us got sick and it was like, damn, this is a real flu going around in this house. And my wife was like, I got a cold, baby, but when I cough, this don't feel like no regular cough. It feels like it hurts. Mm. And it lasted a couple of weeks. And I'm like, you know, you need to go to the damn doctor. This is <laughs> yeah. bullshit. You ain't about to die on me. And then this thing, you know, a few months later, then they said COVID was happening. So by that time, I was like, well, you know, we probably already had it. So we just going to go ahead and ride this thing on out. They, they got a crazy strand about to come out, though, this December. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shit, I'm about to get my little my shot. I'm telling you now. I ain't mad um, at you. I'm getting by on Monday. My flu and COVID shot on Monday. Ooh, I don't blame I you. I got to have it, honey. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look here. Um, I, 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 had, um, I wasn't going to get it, but then uh, I had got the call from Wildin' Out. Like nigga Cannon hit me up. He was like, hey, you wanna come back to uh, and do Wild and Out this season? This yeah. is right after the, you know, the shit had just opened back up a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, yes, I would love to get yeah, yes. Put me back on the show, nigga. <laughs> this is the first season, come back to the 16th season. Yeah. And whatnot for everybody. So um they was like, you gotta go get the uh the the COVID shot and the booster shot. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, at first, I like I said before, I was like, man, fuck that jail. But when I, <laughs> this nigga had this TV job, I'm like, Mortimer, we're back. <laughs> Randolph. <laughs> we are back. I went and got my shit. I don't blame and, uh, you. Yo, and let me, and the funny part about it is when we got on set, it was a lot of people that wasn't, like, can't, that didn't come back for a while yeah. and out that season. Yeah. Because they didn't get the shot. Exactly. But then what happened was the next season came, them motherfuckers had got <laughs> They weren't going to miss another check. Because, hey, it get yo, real out here. Shit wasn't shaking. Yeah, we'll get yeah. real. Yeah. If this is what you would do, this, if you make your life on TV, exactly. then you got to go get that. Come on. Man. Now, that's the only thing that saved me was that I had my podcast. And yeah. I had other yeah. business yeah. ventures and stuff like that. So yeah. it was like, it wasn't a money situation. It was just more so just physical. It was mm -hmm. like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm, I don't feel comfortable, man. I mm -hmm. don't feel comfortable. I can dig it. I can dig it. I mean, I'm, I want to definitely get into all of your business ventures. But before I'm we do it, it, man, I, hey, 
It's weird. You know what time it is, man. Hey, I want everybody to show their school clothes because, you know, my cast, they, they came over here goddamn dripping, as the <laughs> new people say. They came dripping. <laughs> man, show them your outfit. Uh, 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 um, 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 money Talks. So, I got my bodysuit on. Pin me. I'm going to show right now. Yep, okay. So, I got the cargo pants on. Pin little things, you know. And then, I think these are Gucci mules. You know. Mm -hmm. And that's it. All black. All black. All cute. Cute. Yeah. Y'all give it up, folks. That's how you do it. That's how you push that button. Push the goddamn button. That, that's how the fuck you drive. <laughs> Chelsea, um, show them your school clothes. Uh, hi, guys. So today's debut comes from the rainbow. Um, the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea. Um, we are, I, that's why we paused for a second. Like, yeah. what the fuck you say? <laughs> okay. Um, the hair is complex hair, brand new basket for side to hold the bag. The shoes are um, a cow go. Come on now. Yeah. Give it up for you. <laughs> but, hey, now, my cousin lived to show off. Hey, y'all know. Yo, yo <laughs> this nigga, he dressed like this to go to the bathroom. Man, <laughs> anyway, the, the I dressed like this to go to sleep. The whole COVID. <laughs> yeah. Go to sleep. This nigga boy. dressed up in the house <laughs> with no place to go. <laughs> no, no place to go. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he get down, man. Oh, look at Yes, sir. Yo, you've been an entrepreneur for a minute, man. Who, who put you on to even that mindset and that swag? Uh, hanging around DJ Drama them, you know, producing over there for them for years. So that you was, was an affiliate? Well, you I, no hit man? <laughs> I'm a hater like you. Fuck my wrist, man. <laughs> Basically, being over there with Drama them, man, you saw how it was supposed to be done, how you can work in radio but also have your own business going at the same time. You know, uh, seeing him have Mean Street Studios and the other studios that he had inspired me to get my own studio situation. And then also just the freedom that he had mm -hmm. being able to work. I saw how he was able to handle business and how he interacted with folks. Same thing with Sense and Cannon and Leighton, all them boys over there, man. I mean, they all got busy. And I thought to myself, if I'm going to be in this industry, I want to be in it like them. I don't want to be in it, you know, having to do what the boss say do. I mean, I, the bottom line is I'm hard-headed, okay? I'm hard-headed. <laughs> but I'm not hard-headed to a fault to where I won't take, you know, direction or nothing like that. It's just more so I won't take bad direction. Mm -hmm. You see That's what I'm saying? Good. Yeah, I'm not taking, well, it, it ain't coming it in ain't this coming industry. No more. Yeah, you're right. You see what I'm saying? Folks gonna do what you tell them to do. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, I didn't want to be in that position and I knew the only way that I'd be able to enjoy doing what I do as a profession, I had to be in control of what I had going on. And from that point forward, you know, I set towards the path of just educating myself and figuring out how to do it. Because with them, it was through observation. I can observe that they were living the life that I wanted to live. 
I could observe that they were free. I could observe that they were being able to be creative at the same time, too. And, I mean, I could tell that they was living out their goals and dreams on their own dime and on their own right. You see what I'm saying? And that's what I wanted for myself. Man, that's what's up, bro. What's up? And, um, <laughs> uh, so, like, what, what all businesses do you have right now? Okay, uh, High Tower Media. That's the podcast and content creation. High Tower Media. Yeah. What, what, what did you get the name from? You know, that's my last name. Government oh, is Brian Hightower. Oh, got you. Like yeah. on some Steve Hightower. Exactly. Hightower yeah, he stole that from me. <laughs> you yeah. know. Nah. Mr. Hightower. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's my last name. So I said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put it out to my last name. And uh, Hightower Media, you know, that's what the podcast and content creation mm. and uh, digital distribution and marketing and stuff mm. like that that we do over That there. sound like some rich nigga shit. No, nah, it, ain't no, it ain't no rich nigga shit. We just make it do what it's supposed to, man. Mm. And then, you know, with my wife, you know, we own some salon suites, Bella May Natural. Down there on the south I side. I saw when you opened that up, yeah. man. I'm yeah. yo. Right. Th th I that's was major. so that's proud major. of you. And Appreciate you. I, 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 that's the most romantic thing that you could ever do for your lady. Well, see, with my wife, business. my wife, I couldn't have done nothing without her. Mm. So anytime Damn. that I elevated, Damn. I had to elevate her. And when she elevates, she elevate me. So it's like one hand reaching down to grab the other one because, you know, we might not both be on fire at the same time. See, when you decide you don't want to take a COVID shot, you got to go home and consult with somebody. I was just going right. to say, what did your wife say when you came home? She was looking at me like, are you sure you want to do this? Mm. Are you sure like, you want to do this? what if we die? Exactly. But I was like, girl, you know you were just coughing about a couple months ago. You made it through that. You're going to be all right. <laughs> you know, but... She supported me in my decision. And you the whole the thing is, house. when you're trying to make it do what it's supposed to, you need somebody that's got your back that's yes. going to ride and die with you. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So I knew she was willing to die with me. So it was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and ride out. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so hard to get somebody to ride with Come you, on now. let alone die with you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, her and I, you know, we make an excellent team. We just, all of our different business ventures, whether it be real estate or if it's just, uh, her in the cosmetics industry and stuff like that, or me in the media industry, we always put our heads together to see what we're going to do next. We invest in each other, and I mean, we just, it's family, Bro, hold man. Hold on, tell me, where you meet her at? I met my wife at Jean Charles Young Middle School, Southwest uh, Middle School in uh, Atlanta. You grew up with your wife? I've known her since middle school, man. Wow. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey bro, hey, when, you was yeah. when you was saying all that, I was yeah. like, that's the only way that something yeah, like this No, nah, they got to know you. you they got to know you. Yeah. That's and a lot. So we linked back up when we was in college. She was going to spell and I was going to Clark, and then I met her in front of Club Wood, and then we've been rocking ever since. Yeah. But I didn't know her. Like, hell, I'd have known life with her more than I'd have known without her now. Mm. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. That was romantic that I was. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. And so when the sweets, man. Yeah. Was she already a hairdresser or something? Yes. Uh, mm. When she graduated from Spelman, she had been doing hair the whole time. And uh, she opened up a salon back like 2009 or 10. And then it was a ice storm. It flooded out. So then she shut it that uh, she shut that one down. So then uh, when I started the media company and then we started you know making some moves and stuff like that, I said, well, it's time for you to get back into business. Mm. But this time I was like, I know you do hair, mm. but we want to make sure that you have a situation where you can have some passive income coming in on top of what of you're you doing. doing. Mm -hmm. So when you go to work, you always be making money, whether or not you go in or not or not. or not. So mm -hmm. that's when we came with the salon suites. And then we built that thing up, and uh, she's been doing well. Hold on, now. When, it, when this salon sweeps, because I got—I think I got my hair done that one time. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> like, hold on. This, 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 tell me if this is what you're talking about. <laughs> it's, that's like one of them situations where you go inside the building, it's a whole bunch of little barber shops. Exactly. And you got you own one of them, and how many sweets yes, in sir. it? It's like 10 sweets in there. Yeah. That's your shit? Yeah, me and the wife. Yeah. Where y'all located? South Fulton, man, right over there off of Butner Road. It's the only one down there in uh, the South Fulton area. How, how simple wow. was it getting everybody to uh, come? Uh, uh, uh. It wasn't uh, hard getting it booked out. It was just, we ran into some stuff just trying to get it built and, you know, getting approvals and permits and stuff, everything. Mm -hmm. That can get kind of crazy, you know, having mm -hmm. to deal with the city and just, you know, the red your, tape behind all of that. money was strong in the month. Hey, we had to make it do what it was supposed to, Jack. Mm -hmm. We had to. And uh, once we got through all of that stuff, getting the licensing and the uh, permits and everything, once she put up that she was going uh, opening up them sweets, some things filled up quick. Word. Yeah, that's a money maker. I mean, sweets is kind of similar to real estate in that 
you know, you have a space and then you're charging rent for it just like you would yeah. in any other real estate, you know, business and stuff like that. So it kind of allows you to dabble into the real estate part of the business versus mm. just the hands-on doing the uh, service part. Okay, yeah. now I done got a $150 haircut <laughs> uh, uh, at one of these suites before. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> As as a matter of fact, it was right around the time that I had came to see you. Yeah, yeah. And we um, uh, uh, the the first time. Yeah, yeah. The first time when yeah. I was doing the Martin tour. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's the that's when I I got my hair one I had done at one of them, and the girl had and did this like aromatherapy shit with my head, and <laughs> then did massage me and yeah, all. Yeah, the turn chat turned me all the yeah. way out. And I ain't know it was gonna be no hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the? She shaved me up real good. She had yeah, some yeah. good ass music playing and mm -hmm. gave me some champagne. Yeah, oh, so yeah. Worth it. ain't nothing wrong with that. <sighs> yes, yeah, it, it was. It was definitely an experience. And but when after she when she said when she did say I was a little shocked, but yeah. then I, I I wasn't. It wasn't hard for me to take that money about my, and then she was fine as hell too. Come on okay. now. Then, then there's that. And <laughs> 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 I, I needed to say, I definitely came back and referred friends. <laughs> <laughs> and I had wondered to myself, damn, um, do, how much does this space right here cost for her to have to charge me? Yeah. Mm. This, you know. Well, what see, saying? it ain't even about the cost of the space, you know. Uh, stylists and barbers and stuff, that's a money-making business. See, when I come home from work, when I got laid off the first time, mm -hmm. okay. He sound like you James Evans. Yeah, yeah, oh, nigga, I felt like <laughs> James Evans, bro. Uh, I came Lord, home, man. Man. <laughs> man, I came home, and I remember telling my wife, I said, you know what, baby, they, uh, they done laid me off. And she said, <laughs> she said, James! Yeah, exactly. She said, don't worry about that shit. I got these bills covered around here. Come on, real nigga. Yeah. Yeah, she said, I got you. Don't worry about that. She said, you deserve a break. I said, you know what? Wow. I married the right one. Yeah. Bro! I married the right one. Nigga! Yeah, because I mean, you ain't expecting to, to hear that. You're mm -hmm. thinking I'm coming home to a wife and four kids in this thing, talking about I ain't got no other stream of income back to come in. Wow. And you don't feel good, okay? Bruh. Of and fun. when she said that, I said, you know what? You're going to have to shoot me to get me away from your ass yeah. because yeah. we're going to ride this thing yeah. down. Yeah. And it just so happened that time when I got laid off, I was back at work two weeks later because mm -hmm. they laid out the wrong one of whatever was going on. I wound up going right back. But when I went back after experiencing that for two weeks, what happens is when you get laid off mm -hmm. and you're sitting at home, you're like, damn, how do I come up with money? What should I do to come up with some money? I mean, how am I going to survive out here? You start to have all of these different ideas, and you think about all of the opportunities and stuff that you had beforehand mm -hmm. that you didn't take advantage of. Mm -hmm. So when I got back in the radio, I said, okay, there is no way in hell. I know I'm going to get fired again because that's one thing about radio. As the saying goes, you ain't worked in radio unless you done got fired. That's yeah. just how it goes. Mm -hmm. You're going to get fired. So I said, okay, before I get fired again, I'm going to make sure that I have my stuff and all of my ducks in a row so when this does occur, I'll be able to go. So when they do say, okay, it's jab time, it's like, okay, I'm already ready for whatever you bring it to me because I've been preparing for this day mind. anyway. No, I ain't even going to see that. You just be a disrespectful to them folks, man. Now they were doing oh, a job, like Jack. No, you ain't Jack, like, no. You like, hey, hey, what y'all thought I was going to flip out? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, nah, okay. it was all gravy, man. I, I understood it. I knew that yeah. it was coming. I knew what kind of world we was living in at that time, you know. Mm -hmm. And I knew, hell, I had to leave Clark. You know, I was a professor over there at Clark, too. I had to leave that. Yeah. Wow. Get out of here. Yeah, I was a whole professor in this yeah, thing. No, I ain't going to lie. That's what really hurt me we the most. We talking out, too, Mr. Hightower. No, see, they that, doing and it. so that was the other part. As a professor, yeah. I knew all of my students was getting a damn jam. Mm -hmm. So what I look like sitting in the class, I'm so like, you bet not, you bet not what you're doing with your life. Uh, mm -hmm. And these folks got to go to school and get mm -hmm. an education to move on with their life. So it was like, nah, I'm not going to be the one that's going to be outspoken about it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let to each his own, everybody make their own decision. Mm -hmm. But for me, my real passion has always been teaching. That was mm -hmm. one of the things wow, that I was going to do when I was in college at first. It was like, should I do radio or teach? And it just so happened that one of my homeboys that was in one of my classes said, hey, I can get you an internship at the radio station. So I went on ahead and did radio. But teaching was always something that I loved to do because if anybody done been around me long enough, they know I'm going to share that information. I don't care about 
keeping it to myself, saying, no, I'm going to be the smartest person in here. No, you're going to get everything I know, and I want to see you do something that you can teach me how to do later mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. so you can pull me up like I pulled you up. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So, you know, that was one of the hardest things, having to say, you know what, I got to walk. I had to walk away from everything. I had to walk away from radio. I had to walk away from being a professor all over the jab. And, uh, you know, looking at my wife, she was thinking to herself, she was like, all right, now, you walk away from a lot of good situations. All right, right, right now. All right, now. And uh, are you sure yeah. that this is what you want to do? And I was like, yeah, this is what we're going to have to do because I said I ain't doing it. So what was it? Was it just the uncertainty of what the vaccine was? Like, why were you so against getting it? Exactly. That's exactly what it you was. You know she got okay. a jab. Yeah. And so that, well, okay. like I said, I ain't got nothing against nobody that got it. I was just scared about how my body would react. To it, I didn't yeah. know. It was like I might put it in my body, and then I might be, I might have a heart attack in my sleep and die. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? And I didn't want to even risk that. See, I'm one of them kind of people. I don't play with my life. I don't care whether it, I don't care. You what went it bungee is. jumping, yeah, goddamn it! I ain't, I ain't gonna be doing no bungee jumping. I'm not going. If I think it's a slight chance that I might die, yeah. I ain't gonna do it. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I ain't mad at that. Yeah. I'm not mad. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. but it wasn't that I had anything against it or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't blame nobody for taking it. You see what I'm saying? If mm-hmm. I was in a real situation to where I needed to take it, I would probably be on my fifth one right now. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I was blessed to have my stuff in order, so when it did come time, it was like, well, now nah, you can actually make an option. You know, CeeLo Green said this to me one day, and it blew my mind. He said, uh, you know, him and Andre 3000 was talking, and he was like, uh, the real American dream is the ability to say no when you want to. That's real freedom. That's real That's freedom. True. So it's mm-hmm. like you want to be able to say no and mean it, and not have to say yes and be like, you know what, I knew I shouldn't have, mm-hmm. or maybe, maybe you know, my arm been hurting ever since, you know, uh-uh, I ain't want to deal with that. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know what, I'm going to just have to, I'll take the financial beating. And it ain't fun having to walk away. I did radio for 15, 17 years, man. Mm-hmm. I ain't want to walk away from that. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love that. That was, mm-hmm. you know, I love That's to you. do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but my, it was like, you know, it's time. Yeah. Mm. I had a homegirl, she did, like her arm or some shit had, did swell up after she had got in the chat. It was she had a big ass, big ass bump thing hanging out oh the bottom my of her God. Home. But I think it was because you know you mix that that jab in with that BBL. Yeah. You and, know what? Oh you <laughs> know what? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you don't even yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a whole cocktail. That's tell a whole you. other thing right mm-hmm. there. Yeah, you got to choose one, goddamn. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking time. But it, it went away after about a week, though. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Beehive, so um, <laughs> you do you ever have plans of going back to radio in your future, even if it's with a different station? Well, I've had offers, and this is the problem. Once you get out here and you start, you know, making it do what it's supposed to do on your own, oh. mm-hmm. it's a little bit, it's kind of difficult to go back to that kind of a structure. Mm-hmm. You know, I was able to sit in on a little bit of what Headcrack was talking about, and I could feel him to a certain extent to where, you know, as radio personalities, you're creative people. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? We want to create, and as a creative, you want to be free to create how yes. you want to create. You don't want to have to ask somebody, can I interview this person? Can I do this or can I do that? And uh, also, you know, radio is a uh, business, so you got different shifts. So it might be, you know, they want you to work an overnight shift or something like that. And for me, at this point, I ain't trying to work just in a shift and leave my wife and kids at home looking crazy. You see what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't been offered a lot of different things, uh, you know, monies and uh, different shifts and stuff like that, but I haven't seen anything that really just made me want to say, okay, I give up my freedom to do it, mm-hmm. you know. Let me, can I give you your flowers real quick, man? Oh. You was the first person to ever give me a, a radio interview. You know that? Well, you know, oh. I was waiting on... No, no, no. You know that? No, no, I already... No, I was waiting not, on... Not me as my group, but me as a solo artist. You was the first person to ever give me I my own radio on interview. I was waiting to ask me how it got started, because what I was going to say... It was in the production room at Hot 1079 with Lil Playboy. Yeah. Mm. That's where yeah. it started at. It go back. Yeah. What? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that was your first interview, too? Yeah, yeah. It, it had to be one of oh, my first wow. five. And that, that everything dope. in that production That's room. Crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. So it'd be crazy. It'd yeah. be crazy, Playboy. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I wasn't that, ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Appreciate that, though, Playboy. And then uh, when I was with Cash uh, a while ago when we came to your spot, he yeah. was like, man, I'm about to do this interview with Beehive. You'll come with me? I'm like, yeah. yeah. 
you know, he new to the city. He yeah. don't really be known too much. So I was yeah. like, all right, come on, let's go. And um, we went to Hot 107.9 building. Yeah. And I'm thinking, we about to go to Hot 107.9. My boy got his own uh, whole suite yeah. up in there. Yeah. Yeah. In the yeah. same yeah. building. Yeah. Yeah. Now well, that's it's fire. a block up. It's a block up. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But now, I that's mean, fire. that was the whole thing. Bruh, that, that was the game on. I learned for drama. Hold on, this this nigga got a couch better than the couch in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and a TV bigger than mine, too. Bro, I was proud of you, dog. Thank that was you, like man. a real Thank big you. moment. I was like, yeah. man, I just seen the growth. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't know the reason why you left. Yeah. I'm just thinking because you got bigger opportunities because yeah. I'm seeing it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it Thank was a you, good, so, you know, black man to black man moment when I yes, was sir. literally seeing yes, it. I was like, oh, man, I'm proud of well, you. Nah, and I his view, that. did you see his view? Yeah, <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> this nigga got a crazy view. Bro, it was nice, And then dog. it's a flex right over the view no. of how many goddamn um, subscribers he got on his YouTube and shit. I was like, damn, I'm fucking... No, fucking man. They, it was one of the things I knew I had to do it right, but also I knew I needed to make myself... I needed to be able to keep the party going, man. Mm-hmm. That was just the bottom mm-hmm. line. I, I knew that, you know, when you're working in radio, you live in contract to contract, check to check. You don't mm-hmm. know what the hell is about to happen mm-hmm. next. Mm-hmm. Your ratings could be low, and then it could be like, you know what, we tired of you. You could get older and say, you know, you didn't age out the demographic. Mm-hmm. You know, you might miss a few days of work. They say, you know what, we don't need you no more because you didn't come to work. Mm-hmm. Or somebody might be coming for you. Mm-hmm. They see what you're doing, they want to come and take you back. That's true, that's mm-hmm. real. You see what I'm saying? And that was one of the things, too. I was never one of those kind of people to where I would come in and take your spot. If that's what Playboy was doing, I'm gonna let you have that Playboy. I'm gonna carve out my own niche in this thing. Wow. And that's really what you saw when you came over there to the right. suite. It was like, you know what? I had to carve out my whole thing. Like I told somebody the other day, I said, I said, do you think I wanted to have to do all of this? Mm. I said, I had to do it because I had goals and dreams for myself and I knew that my career wasn't fulfilling them. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, sometimes you gotta put your money where your mouth is and go ahead and go to work. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's what I winded up doing, and it turned out to be one of the best risks that I ever took in my damn life. And it's, you know, it's continued to possible, and you know, it's a blessing to me and others, and I'm able to continue to do what I want to do, how I want to do it, and I have more flexibility. You know, I want to be able to talk to who I want to talk to when I want to talk to them. Back in the day when I first started radio, you had to be on fire to come into the radio station. They was like, you know what, if you ain't on fire, then you ain't got no space in the radio station. Uh, If you were too old, you didn't have no space at the radio station because you was too old. And for me, I was in, I was like, no, that's not going to work. I said, it's too much content out here for us to be sitting around here, you know, keeping folks out of the damn radio station. So I used to just bring everybody in there. Playboy, he was already hot when he came in there because this man already had hits and everything else. But it was a lot of different other artists that I would help to break. It was a lot of older artists that I would bring in to revive their career or just to chop it up with them because I knew that they had information. So I was in the middle of this industry trying to figure out what I'm going to do next, okay? Mm -hmm. So one of the things was I knew I needed to get some information from some older gentlemen that had already been there and done that Mm -hmm. inside of this music industry. So that's what caused me to interview a lot of the older artists and rappers and business people and stuff like that. Because I was really trying to soak up the information in the game to figure out how should I play this game that I'm in. And through a lot of those uh, interviews, I think why a lot of people gravitated to them and they were drawn to them is because the information that they were able to receive from Mm -hmm. them might have been life changing. It might have been something that might have gave you a heads up on something or it might have helped you get clarity on the situation that you was trying to figure out. And that's what really led me down my path of just interviewing everybody at the same time, too, because it was like, I got to bring these folks in here. And it wasn't an easy task. Because mind you, we in the middle of a corporation, and I'm in here bringing in folks who are, I feel like I like their music. I'm bringing in folks that I grew up listening to. I'm bringing in folks that I ran into out in the street. They said, hey, man, I want to get on the radio. All right, well, come on in here. Mm-hmm. We're going to bring this thing up. Mm-hmm. And they were like, we don't know who the hell be I bringing in this thing, man. <laughs> but once them numbers started to grow, they said, whatever you're doing is working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they let me ride like and, that. And that's all that really matters is them eyeballs and stuff. Yeah, them numbers. And, and they, they, they don't know what's hot, and they don't yeah. know what's not. Exactly. They, they just going off of, you know, the the, the, the conventional way of doing exactly. things. Exactly. And it's a monkey see, monkey do yeah. industry at the yeah. same time, too. So a lot of times, it might have been an artist that might have came in. They weren't hot yet. Mm-hmm. But my my trick of the trade was I would interview every new artist mm-hmm. like they were Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I'd be like, you the hottest thing, and we'll sell that record, we'll sell that movement. Mm-hmm. One, because 
I'm not gonna have you on my platform and act like you ain't hot. Come on yeah. now, yeah. come on. Oh, that's yeah. disrespectful. Yeah. 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 That's, that's real. That. real. That's that's come real. on, now. So I'm gonna bring you yeah. on my that's platform and act like you ain't nobody. That's 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 like I ain't talking yeah. to nobody. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -oh. So everybody yeah. I talk to is a damn superstar. Right. I don't care right. what the hell you got going on. That's right. But in the same breath, somebody would see me talk to them and they'd be like. That must be it. Yeah. That's somebody. Yeah. I need to talk to them too. Yeah. I need to rock with them. Mm -hmm. So they become contagious at the same time too. Mm -hmm. So we were able to kickstart a lot of stuff. But then also, once the fan base started to grow and the numbers started to show up behind it, it made it a lot easier to break to new move. artists mm -hmm. and to help folks out and stuff like that because I had the social proof mm -hmm. with the numbers coming in at the same time too. Mm -hmm. With you having such a heavy hand in media, how important would you say it is for black people to remain in media? Oh, we got to do that. I mean, it's about controlling our own narrative. You know, uh, my boy, Hot Boy Turk, you know, he has a podcast, uh, Heads Up Podcast, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he gets crazy when he talks about his life story. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. And he's like, B, I got to control the narrative mm -hmm. on me mm -hmm. because other people will take clips from different interviews right. and create a whole different narrative about me that yeah. ain't true. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So when it comes to controlling our own personal narrative, we have to do that. It's the same thing even with the music or mm -hmm. anything in media. So. We have to control the music that comes out because Did, guess didn't what? Didn't I say that to you the other day? Yeah. I, I just said yeah, to Yeah, yeah. We got to control it because the music is what feeds our soul. Yeah. So that's saying. why every time somebody asks me about music, I'm going to say Goody Mob Soul Food is my favorite album it because is. that oh. album is mm -hmm. one that fed my soul mm -hmm. and saved my life. But we have to be in control of that narrative to feed people what the hell Stay they need. Stay in control of the narrative. Because if we don't, then you'll wind up getting what somebody don't, that don't necessarily care about your well-being. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. because they're thinking about a dollar. Yeah. And it's yeah. easy yeah. Mm -hmm. to have a platform that's all about a dollar because guess what? The bullshit is what sells. Yeah. That's right. The sex is yep. what sells. Mm -hmm. That shit sells. Mm -hmm. And we get in here, we get to fight and acting a fool. That stuff is going to sell. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you have to have talent and skill to be able to create real content mm -hmm. that's gonna control the narrative and push the culture forward at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you know everybody needs to sit down and just make sure that we all focus on that when we are creating content as far as the narrative of our people as a whole. Because if you get something that go viral, you want us to be looking good. Right. Yeah, you know, right. you want it to be helping somebody, you want it to be giving out some information. Mm -hmm. Also in controlling the narrative as people, the information that we have to give out. So if it comes to business, mm -hmm. starting our businesses and how to get funding for businesses and mm -hmm. stuff like that, we need to be able to be in seats to where we can say, hey, man, you go do this, you go do that, you do this and you do that, and that's how you get your money. This is how you start your platform. This is how you do all of this stuff. And it doesn't always have to, you ain't got to be no infopreneur to do it. You right. can just be a regular person and say, you know what, I'm going to share this information with somebody because it helped me. Mm -hmm. But if you're not in that seat, you can't share. You can't get How yeah. much stuff have we learned? Now, I'm going to tell you, the interview that really, you know, changed my life, I was at the radio station working overnight, looking crazy as usual, and uh, it was a Breakfast Club interview with Dame Dad. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And when Dame went in there and went off. But who's your boss? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I, feel, I felt both sides. <laughs> I felt where Charlemagne, Envy, and Angela Yee was, because I'm sitting in the radio station watching it. <laughs> And then I felt where Dame Dash was coming from, speaking as a free man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I got to get something after my last name. Mm. And that's when I came with High Time Media. It was like, nah, I need something that I can get to my kids that they can take a catalog and say, you know what? We got daddy catalog and we're going to do what we do with it. Or we can use daddy facility to launch our businesses and stuff mm -hmm. like that and do what we want to do with that as well. Because uh, even my oldest daughter, I mean, she does well with content on TikTok and YouTube as well, too. So, I mean, it's one of those things that it's another way for people to make money, creating content. And the whole thing is when it comes to creating content and making money, it's about organics. Mm -hmm. You got to make it organic. You're not going to make no money not being organic. It's difficult to make the money, okay? So in order to be organic, that means somebody going to have to see you with 500 views. Mm -hmm. Somebody gonna have to see you do that 250 on that interview that you thought was gonna go crazy. Mm -hmm. And you got to sit there and say, okay, what did I do wrong? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to figure out this algorithm. I got to figure out how to grow this platform mm -hmm. so it can start generating money. So then once it starts generating the money, then I mean, it's a money printer. Yeah. Because everything that comes off the platform is generating money. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's one of the things that, you know, I wanna preach to folks too at the same time. Just 
Don't be scared to look crazy. We all going to look crazy. I love that. Mm -hmm. that's I, how say you that. I say yes, that to my cousin greatness. all the time. Yeah. That's really exactly. how you no, I be that's scared that's to look crazy all the time. All the time. And yeah. Jack be like, boy, just do you. Exactly. You just got to do yeah. it. Like, you just well, got to start it. you ain't going to get nowhere if you don't look crazy. Mm -hmm. See, I look crazy when I was bringing regular folks into the radio station that won big, huge celebrities. Folks right. like, I remember the whispers in the back. Mm. Who this nigga bringing in here today? Mm. Why he bringing these folks in here? Oh, man. And then them same folks will go off to be big ass stars, right? And then, wow. you know, it'd be so funny because those same folks would be like, oh, we knew you was going to be great. Nah. We loved you. Nah. You see what I'm saying? But then they were looking at me crazy, but I brought them up there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Nigga, it wasn't cute or cool to interview the OGs when I started doing that. No. Mm. Wasn't nobody, it wasn't no drink champs back then. No. That wasn't yeah, happening. That's real, yeah. It wasn't cute or cool to play that stuff on the radio. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know what? I'm about to do what I do. I know I love this music. I know a new generation of folks going to love this music. Mm -hmm. I know that this artist is the shit. I know that this artist got a good story to tell. Mm -hmm. And we about to put this stuff out here. And as people started to see it work, then you started to see some... If Mike can see, Mike can do. If it worked for him, it's going to work for me, too. Yep. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes you just, you can't be scared to leave. Mm. You got to go ahead and set your foot out there and work it on out. Because, I mean, leadership, a lot of times we ain't born leaders. We just turn into leaders out of necessity. Yeah, survival. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, if I'm going to have a good career in radio, I got to do something that ain't nobody else doing. Mm -hmm. And I got to call myself my own lane. Okay, I can't step on my co-workers' toes and get the guests that they getting. And then, you know, uh-uh. I'm going to do what I do. And then once y'all see what I'm doing, y'all going to respect it, and I'm going to respect what y'all got going on. Mm -hmm. But you going to look crazy in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You going to look crazy. That's just all a part of it, man. But it ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, here, the crazier you look, probably the bigger and the better the damn plan is you got. Really? For real, for real. Yeah. Then there's that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gang? Yep. No, I was um, going back to what you were saying before about how black people have to control our narrative and how we look in the media. Mm. Um, do you think that white people have too much of their hand in what we have going on? Because one thing I always tell black people is that we have to do a better job of gatekeeping. Because gatekeeping is the only way that we're going to preserve whatever we create. Every time we make something, we hand it off way too easy. Mm -hmm. So do you think that, you know, I mean, that's how I feel. I feel like white people have way too much of an insight and influence in what we got going on. Well, we sitting over here in a black-owned studio right now. Mm. Yeah, man. You see what I'm saying? So, so I, I fuck with white people over here. We, no, we do. We do. <laughs> it. I fuck with white we people. Do. We do. I but fuck with all of them. Christian Louboutin, Tom Ford. Okay. <laughs> Please. But I say that to say we have to be in the business because, I mean, if it's a business, everybody's, everybody's going to get in into it. it. You okay. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody's going to get into a hill. If we like chicken wings, I mean, ain't nobody mad at the... Uh, Chinese folks for giving us chicken wings and rice every dog on day. We gonna Hold go on, over we there. We started chicken wing. No, well, I mean, we've they been doing. <laughs> we've been frying up the chicken wings all the time. Started. I'm pretty sure hot wings came from us somewhere. Wow. Yeah, okay. But I say that to say they capitalized and monopolized that whole situation Black right there. Mm -hmm. So for us, we just got to do business. Mm -hmm. We have to do business. We have to build those platforms from scratch. That's why I talk about building stuff organically. See, a lot of folks can't get to the point that they want to get to. Like they say, a big old uh, redwood tree was once an acorn that held its ground. You got to be able to hold your ground through all of the tough times and the rough times so that you will be able to, you know, service the community how you see fit. Yeah. Because nobody's coming to save us. Yeah. Nobody's coming to save you us. Ain't nobody, coming to, ain't nobody coming to help us. And folks are coming to take. Mm -hmm. Folks are definitely coming to take. Mm -hmm. So if they saying, okay, I can put together this story about this person killing this person and I can make a lot of money off of it. They thinking about their bottom line. They ain't thinking about your culture. Mm -hmm. They ain't thinking about what, how you feel about it, how it's going to impact you. They thinking, okay, this person killing this person about to make me a lot of money. I'm about to tell this story and I'm about to get paid. Mm -hmm. We have to build our platforms up to a point to where folks can say, okay, I'm going to tune in to what b High got going on because at least I know I'll be able to get the news mm -hmm. straight, no chase, and I, it'll be something that I could feel good about by the end of the day as well. Mm -hmm. But you got a lot of people that will come in and take advantage of what's going on, but that's on us. That's on us. We got to hold ourselves accountable for what's going on in the culture. We got to hold ourselves accountable for the kind of music that we put out. We got to put, hold ourselves accountable for the images that we put out as well. So with that being said, I think that it just takes a community. We got, and it's the business part too, because see a lot of times it's for the mighty dollar, man. Folks will sell out for a dollar real yeah, fast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. folks want that money, so they're going to do what it takes to get that money. And sometimes, you know, 
Carol Blackman used to tell me this back in the day. She said, be high. All money ain't good money. Yeah. So you yeah. can't just be taking money. You uh -uh. can't listen uh -uh. to Carol, though, man. No, Carol with the truth. Man, Carol with the goat. Ain't, ain't that uh, Evander Holyfield? Uh, no, nah, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> uh, okay. No, they had nothing to do with each other. Oh, okay. But, uh, she Carol, didn't have a baby by him? No, she didn't. She didn't. Oh, that wasn't her? No. Uh -uh. Who that uh -uh. was? I don't know. I don't know, but I don't, I, I know a son that, that ain't about the son. I know that the son. They, like, they're okay. my family. Because that was that was Vander money. She didn't took his no, money. No, Carol. Took his good money. Carol did the morning show at V103 for so many years and made so much damn money. It didn't make no sense. Now, yeah, she was Still man, all of them was spending rich. that money to this day. They yeah. was rich. See, back in them days, you could do radio and get paid for real. Mm -hmm. yes, okay. Yeah. And they still spending some of that money running yeah, Ramona around. Ramona DeBro and all of them. Yeah, oh, Ramona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of uh, radio legends that was getting it in. Joyce Latell. Come on, Justin, mm. tell the quiet store, mm -hmm. man. Come on. I used so, to love her boy. Yeah, yeah. She got one of the greatest I, bosses ever. I used to jack yeah. off our little boy. Okay, man. man. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, I knew that was right. You know, you know, 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 we know, know, quiet no, storm. No, no. Keeping it soft and warm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> oh, crazy, I never hear the same. You crazy. Uh, yeah, but I'm yeah, sorry. No, that, but that's just the main thing right there. It's about just us taking care of each other. We got to take care of each other. We can't expect nobody to come to do this for us. You see what I'm saying? We got to, you got, if you, this is one of the things I used to do when I worked at the radio station, what I would tell young niggas when they coming in and try to get a record played. They'd be like, hey, be how I got a record. Then I'd say, hey, man, don't bring me nothing about no killing. Mm. Just bring me a good record and I'll play it. If it's jamming, I'm going to play it for you. I ain't charging you nothing. If it's jamming, come on in here and we're going to run it. But don't bring me nothing about no killing, man. I ain't playing it. Yeah. Right, that's okay. Thank how, you. How do you feel about the current temperature of the industry, the music being pumped right now, especially with a lot of these female rappers pushing violence? Let's just be real. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, see, in one half of me, the grown man says, I hate this shit, why they keep on doing that? Mm -hmm. But then the other half of me remembers when I was growing up listening to music and the stuff I was listening to was about killing and shooting and doing drugs and everything. But, else but too, niggas, and I was, it. niggas mm -hmm. was studio gangsters when we was coming up. See, some of the folks <laughs> were studio ah, gangsters. You gotta remember, Pac and Biggs both got killed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were playing too much. But though. Pac was a poet, though. Pac was not Pac really was a, a gangster. Pac was a poet. Yeah. He got pushed into that yeah. role. Yeah, now he definitely did. But the whole thing is, is that I think that with the new age and the new artists, you know, it turned into a business. It turned into big business. Yeah. See, the whole thing is now when we start with podcasting right now, podcasting is in its still in its infancy stage. Mm -hmm. You might see a lot of folks doing it right uh -huh. now, mm -hmm. but it's still in the beginning, you know, times of it. Uh -huh. And people that's doing it actually have a passion for what's mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. So they're like, okay, let me figure out how I can put out the best quality product so I can get people to watch my show mm -hmm. organically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But once this thing turns into a big business to where, you know, you got big corporations behind it and they can just sit whoever they want to sit in these seats, mm. then it's going to turn into a watered down mm -hmm. version of what we have now. Mm. You're not going to get the same information in the same conversations. You're going to get what sells. And what's mm. paying the bills. Exactly. And what sells and what goes viral is the violence, the drugs, mm -hmm. the sex, and the murder. You see what I'm saying? So that's what sells. So, you know, a lot of people are going to push that. But I think to myself... We still, so you got to be willing to take a pay cut for the culture. That's real. You got to be willing to take a pay cut for the culture. You see what I'm saying? Well, I, I did that for many years. It was like, you know what? I ain't worried about getting no money. My whole quest is to make the best content that I can make and move the culture forward at the same that time. Makes sense. I wasn't yeah. trying to, you know, get do clickbait and make money because somebody done got slapped in the studio at this point in time. Mm -hmm. It was like, no, nah, I want you to say the most thought-provoking shit I ever heard in my life and let's go viral with that at yeah, the same time. Yeah. Or in Jack case, the funniest shit that I ever heard in my damn life. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Word. Let's showcase talents that make people happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Something that's going to move the culture forward at the same time. But as where we stand right now, that's what's selling. And so you need people to start getting their lumber up and putting their money up behind something that's positive. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's about programming. It's television programming yeah. and radio programming. Mm -hmm. Whatever they put on that radio, how many songs have you heard that you were like, man, I don't like this shit, but three months later, you know it by damn, damn they're all of you, you hear it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They you programming you. Yes. So mm -hmm. we can still use that same power to program some positive into us, mm -hmm. too, at the same time, too. So that's if when I kind of get angry. Yeah. You know, I remember uh, when Joe Gifted came with that Water song, and I had heard that. My homeboy Earl Dollar, Cameron and Roe, had hit me up about that song. We brought him up there, interviewed him, and uh, they did what they did to break that record. But I remember I went back there talking to Hurricane, and I was like, Kane, this record right here is a positive record. 
It's just about doing better and having things. I say we definitely need to get behind something like this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that was a record that blew up. That didn't hurt nobody, and it felt good. It did. It made the same noise as any other record did. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Every record don't got to be something that's gonna, you know, make us look crazy, slander us, and demean us at the same time for mm -hmm. it to go. You can say positive stuff. And that's and the type of guy uh, Joe is for real though. Exactly. You know, he changed his name from Joe Gutter to, to Joe, Joe Gifted, Gifted. and yep. he really didn't pop. Until he got on that wave and exactly. started moving like that. Come on, man. And wow. I mean, it works. It yeah. works. You know that positivity. See, the yeah. whole thing is, get what? You ain't got the jam if you're talking about some bullshit. Yeah. yeah. You ain't it's, got the jam. It's really done down. <laughs> exactly. But then I'm going to put it to you like this. So this is a good way of explaining it. If you look at the women that's uh, doing music right now, even though you might not necessarily agree with what they're talking about, as far as their deliveries and their rapping styles, and they, they, they in there bitch snapping. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Megan going in there snapping. Oh, she's Carter amazing. going in there mm -hmm. snapping. Yeah. Nicki Minaj going in there snapping. Why? Yeah. Because they're going into an industry that didn't embrace them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they know in order to be able to make it they in this industry, you got the jam. Mm -hmm. Now, what's scaring me now, I'm hearing some females that's putting out some garbage and they ain't even snapping. So now that's right. when it started to get scary. It's like, okay, yeah. now, so now y'all just gonna come over here and take a break just like the guys mm -hmm. did. So hey, we got to get the competitiveness back and, the, you know, the arts back into it, man. You know, you had rap artists mm -hmm. back in the day. Battle. These guys were mm -hmm. artists. Playboy was an artist. Let me go in here and create a dance. Let me create mm -hmm. a movement. Let me create something for people to gravitate towards. Now, you know, we got a lot of hustlers out here jugging. Mm. Yeah. It's like, okay, let's go ahead and put the bag up. Let me go ahead and get this money, and I'm going to make this money, and I'm going to go and kick it. Yeah. And you can't blame nobody for that either. Mm. But in the same <laughs> breath, we still have to have some artists mm -hmm. in there to make it worth watching and listening to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Hey, uh, can we talk about, like, Todd's, um, you a real one, right? Yeah. I know, but I'm just letting you know. Mm. How you keep some stuff in terms of reaching the hood. Yeah, yeah. And see, that's what I call taking a pay cut for the culture mm -hmm. right there. It's, I done took plenty of pay cuts from the culture from where somebody that came in and said some shit that I knew could either get them killed, mm -hmm. I knew could get them arrested, mm -hmm. I knew was just slanderous towards somebody yeah. else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it was like, nah, we ain't even going to put that part out yeah. because mm -hmm. that, ain't even, uh, that ain't a good look for you. Yeah, that ain't yeah. a good look for me. That ain't mm -hmm. a good look for the culture yeah. altogether. And that's one of the things that, you know, I ain't got no problem doing it. I mean, that's why I tell folks, we ain't here recording, man. Whatever you say, if you say some bullshit, it probably ain't going to make the cutting room flow. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to put that out because, I mean, we ain't about to, you know, piss folks off. We got human beings out here trying to live their damn life. Ain't nobody got time for you to be stressing them out with that bullshit. Yeah. And then also, yeah. folks' lives, too, they don't know. Mm. Sometimes you might have a young nigga in there that don't know that they're saying the most fucked up Very shit that true. can come out of their damn yeah, mind. So you, as an elder, you have to say, hey, man, that shit ain't coming out like that, nigga. Uh, nigga, you might, uh, you might even stop because like, nigga, we ain't using that shit, yeah, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So don't even worry about that. And then, you know, folks will call you out to the interview like, hey, man, when he said this, this, and that, take that out. I'm like, yeah, no problem, nigga. I, sometimes, like, nigga, I wasn't going to play that shit in the goddamn way. It was some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we ain't about to play that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's been many a times that I didn't had to cut a lot of stuff out. And mm -hmm. this stuff that probably would have went viral and went around the world about four, five times and mm -hmm. made me plenty of money. Mm -hmm. But that means you got to get better at your craft. If it's about the money, then you need to be putting out some fire ass shit so mm -hmm. you can make the money mm -hmm. because the money's out there to be made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. See, the currency is time and attention. Mm -hmm. People spend time and they pay attention. Mm -hmm. The more attention you get people to pay to you, the more money you're going to make. The more time they spend watching you, the more money you're going to make. And once you understand those two principles right there, you'll be able to go on this whole digital world and get over. Yeah. 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 Do you ever feel like an internal struggle when it comes to pushing out content? Like, say, for example, if it's a mass shooting, mm -hmm. I know as a content creator, sometimes I don't want to put that out. Do you ever feel like, because if you put it out there, it kind of breathes life into it a little no, bit? No, that's, that's true. So it do you does. have, yeah. It does. Uh, some shit I just, it depends on what's going on at the time. Mm -hmm. If it's a news story that just needs to be broke, if George Floyd, situation doesn't happen and mm -hmm. we got to talk about that, then we gonna talk about it. But then sometimes, you know, it was a time in Atlanta where folks was dying left and right and it got to the point where I was like, you know what, I ain't talking about this, mm -hmm. man. I, I'm not even talking about nobody dying right mm -hmm. now because I don't have it in me yeah. to mentally even get that energy because mm -hmm. I'm grieving my damn self. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know what, I don't even want to talk about this like that and I'll mention it later on, but I don't even want to report this right yeah. now. I thought I was yeah. the only I thought I was yeah. the 
that's real. Yeah, no, it's too much. Yeah. It yeah. gets to be too much. And yeah. I mean, sometimes you just got to say, you know what? Nah, we ain't even going. Mm -hmm. We let's find some good news to talk about. Let's mm -hmm. find something else to talk about. Or we just gonna have to sit this one out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let this one go ahead and pass over until you know something better happens. Mm -hmm. But everything, nah, we ain't reporting on everything that goes on. But then. You got to think if you're a corporation, yes. see, I'm a mom and pop business, mm -hmm. so I can kind of, you know, I'm hands on with everything. You can cater but if you're a corporation, you got employees that's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Every day when I worked at radio, every day I went to work, I had to produce a show and have something to say. Mm -hmm. I can't get on there and say, well, I ain't got nothing to say to y'all today, but I'm in this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so I had to look at the news, and if it was newsworthy, you know, I would just find the best newsworthy topics that would help and that we could kind of turn into some kind of educational uh, situation at the same time, too. Mm -hmm. But, no, nah, I definitely feel you with that. It does become draining, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, talking about negativity all the time, man. And, I mean, even though that's what sells, we have to just it's, – it's like working out, man. We got to work that whole positive muscle out. Mm -hmm. That's right. And make that mm -hmm. thing strong to get folks used to yeah. seeing it. Yeah. But it's going to take – that's the long way. That's the strong way, you know, is keeping it positive and keeping everything up and up. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to get up through there fast, you better go up through there with some controversy. Come on now. Those yeah. are just the facts. Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm saying? I hate it to be the case, but if you're trying to grow your platform and you're trying to get up there fast, controversy will get you there. But hey, I don't want to do it, bro. Like, like, no, nah, like I ain't going to do I, it. I take this long road and yeah. shit, and it's, it, it's, it's broke. It's lonely. Oh hell yeah! It's uh, but I I can't I don't want to I can't contribute to that yeah. as an elder, you know, and uh, trying to like you said make the game progress and stuff exactly. like that. And, and if if it, man, even if the if the show don't ever get off, yeah. and whatnot, I can sleep better. Exactly, that was I one of the main things yeah. right there. I love yeah. being able to wake up in the morning and be like, you know what? Yeah, I ain't done nothing wrong. Yeah, I ain't no yeah. fuck nigga. Come on. I'm not Come a on. Nigga. Come on. And that's real. That's, real. that's so literally real. how you feel. You yeah. be like, thank God I went in there and just kept it real. Thank mm -hmm. God I didn't say no bullshit. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how I did that with the whole COVID thing. I knew I couldn't go out and use my voice and say, hey, you don't take it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't gonna do that because I didn't know how I felt about it all together. Mm. So I had to represent both sides mm. of it. I had some people that caught, uh, said take it, and then I brought Reza Islam in there. And mm. you know he wasn't going for that. Mm. You okay. see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I had to use my platform in a way to where we could still get the other side of it out mm -hmm. so people can still make an informed decision outside of me telling folks what the hell's mm -hmm. going on. So that's mm -hmm. how you use the platform. Yeah. It's like, that, okay, that, you know what? I got the, this brother's talking about a different aspect of this that a lot of people ain't talking about right mm -hmm. now because at that time, if you didn't get your damn shot, you was a fool. Mm -hmm. But then there was another, you know, speck of people that would say, if you do get a shot, you are a fool. So we had to represent both sides of that conversation mm -hmm. so that people can make an informed decision for themselves. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I know for me, I use personally my discernment. Like if I don't feel right about it, I'm just not gonna do it. Cause like Jack mm -hmm. and um, B.I. said, I gotta be able to sleep with myself at night. Yeah. So like that mass shooting that happened in Maine, I could yeah. not post about it cause I just felt like, but it, the Israel thing that was going on, the Palestinians, yeah. that was something I felt personally. So I use my discernment cause at the end of the day, it's our platform, it's, it's essentially who we are. Yeah. So I, I go by my discernment. If it don't feel right, I can't do it. And I'm willing to take that L. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, it's all it's always about like what am I? What's my mission? Like, cause when you're putting out content, you're doing it for a reason. So for me, my content is very much black girl centered. I'm not gonna put out anything that's not going to be a positive light for black women. Mm -hmm. So it's always me just going back to my mission. Like, okay, my is this what is gonna push black women forward? Is this what's gonna push black people forward? Period. Mm -hmm. So it's always about just like reminding yourself about why you're doing it. Cause we all doing it for a reason. Mm -hmm. And you gotta go back to your purpose like every single time. Cause that's mm -hmm. really how you stay true to just yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and stay true to your content. Yeah. What you said about that purpose too. I mean, that's a leading force and factor in everything that I do as well. You know what you're here for. You know what you're here for. You see what I'm saying? You yeah. know, I knew I was here to give, to be a vessel for folks to have a voice to say what the hell they needed to say. 
Mm -hmm. So I knew it wasn't about me. I wasn't in the game to be a star or for for yeah. me to get my name out there. It was like I'm here to amplify other folks' voices. Mm -hmm. And I realized that that was just the purpose that I had. It mm -hmm. wasn't that it's something that I kind of fell into, but it was a case of I looked up and I looked at my own situation when I was trying to come up and I realized I was catching hell. Mm -hmm. and I was like, man, I'm trying to amount to some shit, but ain't nobody helping me. Ain't nobody showing me how to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And folks is kind of, I feel like they're kind of stopping me from doing what the hell I mm. want to do. And I said, you know what? From the inside out, I'm going to break this chain. Come on. I'm going to break this chain. So guess what? I'm going to help everybody that come around me. Mm -hmm. You holler at me, you're going to get on this damn radio station. Yeah. And that, you yeah. know, ain't nobody got time for that either because, you know, that can be, you know, wow. This a rogue nigga in here doing whatever the hell he want to do in the middle of this corporation yeah. saying, it's I'm going to use your box. radio station to get these folks voice that yeah. you might not necessarily want on the radio yeah. at that time. <laughs> I was bucking the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Now, I was bucking the system, and then once I got good at it, see, I had to get good at it, mm -hmm. and once I got good at it, you know, folks started to say, you know what, you're kind of good at it, so we're just going to let you go ahead and do what yeah. you do. Mm -hmm. But that's the other part, too. Ain't nobody going to give you permission to be great. Yeah. Uh. Don't nobody mm -hmm. give you permission to be great. You got to go out there and do that shit. You got Come to take that shit. Yeah. Ain't yeah. nobody going to say, hey, man, I see something in you. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to give you everything. They're going to say the opposite. <laughs> Nigga, they're going to be like, hell no. Not, that, that's what you're going to look crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what yeah. I tell you, folks. For me, when I was coming up, yeah. every time I went to the powers that be to try to get a promotion or to try to elevate, mm -hmm. they'd be like, no, not you. Everybody here but you, no, nah, not you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, now nah, you know what, y'all niggas is wrong. At some point, I was like, you know what, I was a popular ass nigga growing yeah. up. I always <laughs> had a little flavor, and y'all don't see it in this thing. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, then I can show y'all, but then I can tell y'all. I ain't going to continue to keep on trying to tell y'all who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just have to show y'all. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was able to do. But, you know, that's nothing, too, when it comes to this content, and that's just for anybody that's watching, too. You know, after you do something a hundred times, you're going to get good at it. Come on now. You right. see what I'm saying? So a lot of times, you know, when you starting off trying to build that platform and you like, man, I want this bitch to blow up. It ain't blowing up fast enough. That's because you need to work out your goddamn kinks, nigga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You got to work mm -hmm. them kinks out, man. You don't want everybody to see you over fucking up a damn interview or just, you <laughs> yeah. see what I'm saying? You're here stinking yeah. the damn place up. You don't know that you're stinking it up. Mm -hmm. But after you do it a hundred times, you're going to be like, oh, no, nah, I wasn't that good when I started. Thank God mm -hmm. I was able to get that, those reps in. Mm -hmm. so so now that I am hot, I know how to handle myself in any situation. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You gotta so, watch yourself. Come on, I, I, man. Hey, bro, that's that shit be um, pissing me off when I find out people don't watch themselves and everything, and they wonder why they garbage on the mic. Yeah, you yeah. gotta, you yeah. have to watch and edit yourself. Exactly. And it's the same way in comedy too. Yeah. And whatnot, you know, you gotta record yourself and look at what you did wrong. Okay, they don't, they don't laugh at this. Yeah. Okay, that's why I posted. Okay, let me take that line out. Yeah. Put this in. Okay, I had went too far when I said it. Oh, let me look. Okay, I see. I offended her when I said this. I offended him. Yeah. And yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to make nobody feel that way. That's you have right. to look at yourself. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Definitely be self-aware with this shit. And see, I also got to give you your flowers too, though, Jack, because I said all the damn time, and I'm going to just say it again on his damn show. You know, he was one of my inspirations to get started. I was sitting down here looking crazy, mm -hmm. but I'm watching This Is 50 with Jack Thriller every damn time this nigga's dropping, and he was really the pioneer of this shit yes. that you see now. Yes. Nobody else was yes. doing it. Yeah. The truth. Yeah. The yeah. Truth. Yeah. 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 No, that's real. Mm -hmm. That's real. Mm -hmm. I remember when I got the call from Jack, I'm like, man, this nigga Jack Thriller on my damn phone. Mm -hmm. I've been watching. I said, Jack, I watch all your shit, nigga. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Man, thank and I, you, bro. No, that was just real because, I mean, YouTube and just digital content at that time, mm -hmm. it was really non existent. Yes. It didn't exist. You, yeah. Come on. Let's so this man was over here mm -hmm. interviewing folks. You know, my favorite, one of my favorite ones I was the know. one with uh, Frank Alexander, man. Oh, wow. With all of this Tupac stuff yeah. going on right now, yeah. man. I yeah. mean, how do you feel about that when you thinking, I dare to solve the case myself? Hey, hey, bro, I know what happened for real. <laughs> Frank told me before he died, he died two weeks after I did that interview with him. Wow. My two God. two weeks after I did an interview with him, I, um, I, I I felt it was a very eerie feeling, you know what I'm saying, interviewing this guy, because I had seen all of his documentaries and, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, talking about uh, Pac for years and the DVDs mm -hmm. and all that shit and whatnot. And then, you know, it, he came to um a, a, to my hotel mm -hmm. uh, with it, with his crew and everything, and, uh, you know, he was so deep, too. Yeah. He was, he had, like, like 
eight goons with him and shit. Damn. And I didn't understand that. Yeah. I, I didn't get it. Yeah. But you know, two weeks later when he died of of um a supposedly a suicide. Yeah. yeah. Supposed to be. Yeah. You know, uh I, I everything that he said, it sounded completely different. And I was like, oh shit. So maybe this, this, he this wasn't no conspiracy theories and shit. Mm. Oh shit! I did, all this shit he was saying is fucking for real. My God. Yeah, and you know I got calls from a Phoenix Shakur and all kind of different people that was connected to the whole Tupac uh, of course situation. Suge Knight called me one night, scared wow. the shit out of me. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I got under my bed. I was like, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, oh, oh, you, oh, you in L.A.? Oh, okay. He said, where you at? Shit, I'm. In LA too. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, he told me, you know, saying a bunch of like different things that, you know, I don't even feel comfortable even repeating. Goddamn. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's, no, don't do it. It's, yeah. yeah, this shit. Take I'm gonna let these folks. The coach. Yeah, I'm gonna let these motherfuckers finish all of this shit. All of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it, we, it was like that's that was, another thing too. I don't solve no crime. I ain't solve no crime. Yeah. 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 This too. Because damn near everybody uh, dead. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody did. Like, uh, uh, Feeney was asking me, like, what was he saying? What kind of conspiracy theories? He wasn't saying shit. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. How did you get my number, Feeney? <laughs> Damn. What the fuck? Yeah. And so, you know what I'm saying? It was, um, but I'm glad I, that God chose me yeah. to uh, do that. It was a four part series, too. Yeah. I'm the first person to do, uh, to break interview up and make it wow. different parts. Thanks. You know facts, what I'm saying? Facts, I, I don't get facts. no credit for that. But I didn't know what I was facts. doing at the time either. Yeah, you, 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 <laughs> I had no trailblazing. idea. Trailblazing. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. On, yeah. That man. was crazy. Come on. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. Be high. Well, I, I, I sure appreciate that, you saying man, on my because show. Because I mean, man. that shit was really inspiring for me. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. See, I mean, the bottom line is, I'd be a goddamn lie if I say I did what I did, not thinking about what he was doing mm -hmm. before I did it. Yeah, you see what yeah. I'm saying? So, you know, I might have inspired a few folks that came out to me, but I will always say if a nigga asked me, nigga, Jack Thriller is what inspired me to do what I was doing. And then, you know, Trent Sutter Sense, he was the one that gave me the game. See, Sense was like, Beehive, start doing interviews. At that time, I was on the radio at 2 a.m. in the morning from 2 to damn 5 a.m. That mm -hmm. was as good as it was getting for me. Because mm -hmm. they would not give me no damn daytime. <laughs> So I remember saying, I said, man, since, man, don't nobody goddamn want to hear me at 2 o'clock in the morning. He said, nigga, you better start doing some damn interviews. Mm. I said, okay. And I started doing them, but watching Jack said, you know what? I need a camera in this motherfucker. Mm. I don't need to be just doing the interviews. I need to, it. I got to go gotta digital with this yeah. thing at the yeah. same mm. time. Because, yeah. I mean, that audio with radio, the show died the second you get off the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We could have had the greatest interview ever today on the air, but if there was no audio recorder, no camera recording mm -hmm. that, then that shit died the second y'all got off the damn That's air. Real. So what niggas didn't know I was doing, I was like, no, buddy, y'all go y'all don't know what I'm doing now, but when the 50 years of hip hop come and I start showing y'all niggas what I did, mm -hmm. then you can be like, oh, now I realize mm -hmm. what he was doing. I remember mm -hmm. telling that, I said, I'm in here documenting history. I said, everybody else in here fucking around. <laughs> I said, nigga, I'm in here documenting history because I said, this stuff that we got going on in here is historical. Mm -hmm. The only thing that hurts though, when you document so much stuff, similar to that Frank situation, mm -hmm. A lot of the folks that was in that production room with us, Playboy, a lot of them ain't here today. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The people that I started with mm -hmm. ain't even here today. They and didn't that, get the jail. That, man, that, that's the part that's depressing about it all. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because when you're thinking, okay, I'm going down my memories museum. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I remember when that boy Playboy, he was just a young nigga coming in here, man, dancing, doing his thing. Mm -hmm. That was a beautiful thing. Good to see him still great, doing great. well right yes, now. Sir. Yes, sir. But then I'm thinking about bankroll. Mm. Then I'm thinking about trouble. Yeah. Wow. Then I'm thinking mm -hmm. about takeoff. Wow. Then I'm thinking about Nipsey. Wow. Then I'm thinking yeah. about young greatness. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm thinking yeah. about all of these folks God, that damn. came in there. I'm thinking about Marlo. I'm thinking about all these uh, folks, damn. man. Don't mm. boy rah rah, man. Um. I mean, I'm thinking about all of these people that came in here that had dreams similar to mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you know they went up fast. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. be. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, a lot of folks just slim dunking, man. Slim dunking. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what hurts. You know. Having to do this and create that content, man, and you seeing folks die, mm -hmm. yeah. it's like, man, I was just talking to Shawty, or mm -hmm. I was planning on bringing Shawty back in here, or mm -hmm. when I get the suite, that would have been somebody that I would have made show came down there to holler at me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because it's like, that's my partner right there. 
And I mean, that it's heartbreaking to see that. Yeah, it is. And then also, you know, what people don't realize happened is we lost a whole damn generation of rappers. Yes. We lost a whole generation. Everybody that I name is supposed to be going strong right now, carrying this thing on. Yeah. And then when mm -hmm. you look up and they say, we ain't had a number one hit all year, mm. that's because in between prison and the graveyard, we lost a whole generation. Mm. Yeah. The whole generation, and nobody wants to say nothing about that. And that's what's starting to piss me off, too, because I'm bringing it up in interviews. I'm trying to mention it to people, mm. because if we don't say nothing about it, they won't it's going to keep it. happening. See, that's the thing about it, too. You damn sure snap with that. Uh, the narrative controlling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, folks might want the narrative to seem as though we still thriving. Mm -hmm. No, niggas is dead. Yeah. Niggas is in jail. Mm -hmm. We ain't thriving when folks is in the ground and behind walls. How is that thriving? Mm -hmm. Shit is mm -hmm. fucked up. Mm -hmm. We got to change that and we got to create more opportunities and we got to show people how to do it right so that they can stay alive, so that they can thrive and they can be an asset to another generation coming after them. And that's one of the things that we really need to be working on just in this city right now is us working towards making sure the next group of folks, the next group of artists know how to stay alive, how to survive the game, how to make the money, how to keep the money, and how to pass it on. That's the issue that we have between, you know, our generations is that the young folks don't fuck with the old folks. Why don't they fuck with the old folks? Because when I was young, trying to get into the game, you, you little boy at me. You said, sit down, little nigga, I ain't fucking with you. And you wouldn't let me in the game to play with you. Mm. Then you start to get older. But now I'm growing organically with my peers. And since you didn't let me play with you, I'm going to say, what, nigga, you old. Take your old ass over there. Don't come over here with me and my people mm -hmm. because you wouldn't let me play with you and your people. So you mm -hmm. take your old ass over there, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be over here with my people. And now I'm looking at you. I'm old. I'm like, well, these niggas ain't fucking with us because they, well, nigga, when he was trying to come up, did you, you help him up? Yep. Mm -hmm. People remember that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's the community that we got to bring to the game that will allow everybody to be successful. So even with podcasting, I need to see as many podcasts as possible. Mm -hmm. I tell, when I was at Clark, I would tell my students, I said, in the future, it's going to be more podcasters than rappers. And they were all looking at me like I'm crazy. And now we're starting to see. There's a mm -hmm. lot more podcasters coming out of yeah. nowhere. There's a lot more. But it's going to be just, if you can have 100 rappers, you can have 100 podcasters. Yeah, Why not? it's the art. It's yeah. the same thing. You see what I'm saying? It just ain't got no music playing at the same time. But they get the same message that you'll get through some damn music. Niggas are still feeling good after watching that stuff and stuff like that. But as a community, we got to let the next generation know that, hey, man, we, we got to hand them the torch. And we ain't even got to hand them the torch. Nigga, just light they torch. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to give them your. Just say, yeah. hey, nigga, here go a little fire. Now, Ron, take off, do what the hell you got to do. Yeah, you absolutely correct, bro. Absolutely Forgive correct. me for getting on the tangent, because sometimes I get pissed. No, no, no. no. Damn. 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 Because I'm curious, with you speaking that way, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the generation now? Because they don't really want to hear, like, the new generation of kids, it's a little bit harder to deposit into them than it was before. They're, they've, been, they've been raised by technology. Mm -hmm. So how do we get into a space where we can even, you know, talk to them? These kids got to know that it's money to be made. The money is what's driving their asses. Uh, when I was teaching, I would make sure that them students would see how to make the money. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's one thing to create the content, but it's another thing to know how to actually monetize your content. Mm -hmm. And once the students learn, once you smell that blood, you taste that blood, and you realize, oh, it's some money for me doing my goddamn thing, then you're going to go all the way the fuck in. Mm -hmm. But the issue is they got barriers to monetization. So you have to grow your stuff organically so that you can break those barriers mm -hmm. and start to monetize how you need to monetize. But with the students and with the kids and the next generation, they just got to see the success. They got to see the money. They got to see the money. Mm -hmm. They got to see the money. Mm -hmm. We got to let these folks know that, hey, man, there's some money to be made. And see, that's another issue with the game. You know, folks will figure out how to make the money. And they, they, won't be the they won't say a damn mm -hmm. thing. They act like they ain't done a damn thing. They ain't made no money. Mm -hmm. They don't know how they made the money. They mm -hmm. don't even know where the money coming from. Mm -hmm. And then folks sitting around there looking crazy as hell because they're like, nigga, where the fuck the money at? Mm -hmm. Nigga, tell somebody where the fuck the money at. Yeah. And that's what my thing is. You see what I'm saying? And so by me being in certain rooms and asking those questions mm -hmm. and getting told, nigga, we don't know where the money's at. Nigga, I had to figure out how to do it. And my answer to that is building an organic fan base. Mm -hmm. The consumer, the people that's watching, and time and attention is the currency. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to get no money out your pocket. I just need you to watch, to watch me, man. Yeah. 
I just need you to watch me. And the more eyes you get on your damn self, the more money you're going to make, period, point blank. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. But if you sitting over here cheating yourself and you say, okay, I'm going to put 100,000 views on this and only 50 motherfuckers really watched it, you ain't mm -hmm. made no money and you out the money it cost you to buy the damn view. Mm -hmm. Now you done did that 10 times in a row. You ain't made no money. You out the money. Don't nobody even give a damn. A few folks said ooh and ah, but ain't shit work. Mm -hmm. So now that's why you got a lot of stuff that don't last that long. Mm -hmm. It might last a year because they'll run out of the money, but you got to be willing to take it slow. Mm -hmm. You got to be willing to grow. You, I mean, hell, if we plant a seed today, we ain't eating it out for tomorrow, nigga. That shit got to grow. Mm -hmm. So that's the main thing is just letting folks know that it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to look crazy. It's okay to start off slow. And see, that was my thing. See, I started off so goddamn early. Mm -hmm. They interviewed with that nigga right there was back <laughs> in 2011, sir. Yes. So by the time niggas figured out what the fuck was going on, nigga, I had the game. Yeah. I had yeah. about nine years mm -hmm. of fucking around until I figured out. I tweaked every possible organic tweak I could goddamn tweak until I figured that shit out. Mm -hmm. And once I figured it out, I was like, okay, it's time to teach it. Mm -hmm. Went over there to Clark and taught it. You see what I'm saying? And anybody that comes to the office, I'm going to teach them if they ask me. Nigga, Jack, no, I done sat down with Jack. I'm like, Jack, this is what the hell is going on, nigga. This is how you do it, nigga. This is what you need to be doing. Because that information ain't going to hurt nobody. Jack making some money ain't going to stop me from making some goddamn money. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's going to empower Jack to empower me. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If Jack is empowered and he don't empower me with it, so be it. That was my blessing to you, nigga. And that's what you're going to get. But, nigga, we ain't doing this shit every goddamn day. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, but we got to be selfless, too. Uh -huh. We can't be so selfish mm -hmm. to where we can't help no damn body. Niggas need help out here. That's right. Yes. And we got to take it upon ourselves to help other folks and that's stuff right. like yeah. that. That's right. Because that's really, that's how I built the whole damn platform. It was uh -huh. based off of service. It was like, mm -hmm. I knew that artists didn't have money for promo. I knew that artists might have been relegated. They sending our OGs off the pasture to die. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, nigga, we did what we did. And then don't get it messed up, too. Some of the artists, they blew up and they acted the ass the whole damn time. And then when they ran was over, they're like, oh, no, nah, nigga, we ain't letting you back in here because, yeah. nigga, when you was in here, you was a bitch. That's right. Mm -hmm. You see Super what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that was the whole thing. And then folks got a chance to grow up and they realized that, damn, I played that all wrong the first mm -hmm. go around. So let me come back in here and play it right again. But somebody had to be there to give folks the opportunity to rectify their wrongs. They had to be there to give folks the opportunity to work their damn kinks out. Had to be there to give folks the opportunity to grow. And that was one of my main things. But in doing so... I was able to grow me a fan base at the mm -hmm. same time, too. And that allowed me to be successful. But it was organic. So by being organic, once you get real people tuning in, you know, when it comes to digital content, whether it be TikTok, you know, YouTube or anything, if they paying you to put up content, every time you drop, that's money into the bank. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, nigga, some shit might give you 100000 Some shit might give you $5. Some mm -hmm. shit might not give you nothing. But 50 cents, you're going to get something, you're going to get at least 50 cents or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But some shit go crazy, some shit don't. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But the, at the end of the day, niggas all going into the same piggy bank. So with that being said, by the end of it, you're going to be good because you just collecting cash. If you're doing it organically and you ain't worried about what it looked like. Mm -hmm. If you're worried about what it looked like, then guess what? The money that's coming in going to be going right back out because you putting it on marketing and promotion. And it ain't nothing wrong with marketing and promotion. You do need to do that. Mm -hmm. But if your... Uh, business model don't have, ain't generating enough money for that shit, then nigga, you don't need to be worried about marketing. You need to be guerrilla marketing and promoting. Mm. You see what I'm saying? That's right. This ain't a hand <laughs> comeback. You need to be telling them, you need to be texting that link out, nigga. Yeah. 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 You need to be yeah. tweeting that link out. That's you need right. to be DMing mm -hmm. that link out. That's right. You see what I'm exactly. saying? And you got to, you know, make sure that your captions and your thumbnails are good so folks will want to click on it. Mm -hmm. 100%. Ain't nobody clicking on Behind Jack Thriller Part 1. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. That that ain't gonna work. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? But Mason if they Jack. say Jack Thriller recalls goddamn uh Frank uh, got before you. he died yeah, yeah. talking to him yeah. with Beehive, yeah. then they were like, wait a minute, nigga, we searching Tupac right now. Yeah. That's a high yeah. keyword you that ain't you're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. Jack yeah. Twitter recalls talking to Frank Alexander before he died with Beehive. Yeah. The nigga be like, shit, let me see what the fuck they talking about, nigga, because word. I'm trying to figure out yeah. exactly what's yeah. going mm -hmm. on. So yeah. the captions is what really makes the money. And the yeah. reason why you break it up into segments and stuff like that mm -hmm. is because when you talk about attention and time, folks is paying attention and they spending time. So folks might be like, you know what, I love Beehive. 
that nigga got a good ass show. But do you love me enough to spend an hour with That's me every real. day? I think you love me enough to spend five minutes with me though. Mm. All I need you to do is look at me for five minutes, maybe even three minutes. I could probably get 50,000 folks to look at me every day for goddamn five minutes. Mm. Mm. I might only be able to get maybe five to 10,000 to look at me for an hour every day, if that. Mm -hmm. But I could damn sure get 50 to 100,000 motherfuckers to come in and say, nigga, I'll give you five minutes. Mm -hmm. But that five minutes is money in the bank. Now that ain't cost you nothing. That ain't hurt you. That ain't made you do nothing. You were sitting over there <laughs> waiting to go into the goddamn bank. Mm -hmm. You in line at the bank, nigga. You just went on ahead and caught that right quick. And then guess what? You liked it, so you shared it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that's how the money gets made. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the whole theory behind mm -hmm. all of that. And folks ain't sharing that. You just see it. You know, you'd be like, why that nigga bringing that shit up in all them goddamn clips? Because first of all, nigga ain't gonna watch the whole damn thing. Really? Uh -huh. They ain't got time for that. Nigga got five minutes to spend with you. And they'll pay attention for that five minutes. How you gonna describe an hour long podcast mm. in a hundred characters? But you can describe a five minute clip in a hundred characters. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's the science behind it all, you know, when it just comes to just the actual technique to being able to drop the content and make sure that it'll have a better chance of going viral than normal. Because if you do it based off a generic caption of just saying, you know, behind here talking that shit, then, you know, you gonna get my fan base of yeah. niggas that might be 30 niggas that come in and say, yeah. nigga, I fuck with me, I love man. that nigga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then if you say something, you know, that's uh, compelling, you go get that fan base to come in there and everybody that's looking for that information. Mm -hmm. So you attach yourself to the trending topics, what's mm -hmm. going on at that day and time. And mm -hmm. then also sometimes you just gotta tell a good ass story. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Have a good ass conversation. Like I was just telling Jack earlier, I dropped some shit on TikTok with Jack the other day when he was telling a fun ass story. And I mean, that shit, if it wasn't so, I should have cleaned it up before I dropped it because it was bolder than a motherfucker. But that <laughs> bitch went viral. It hit like 30,000 views in an hour. I upload that motherfucker. I'm like, oh shit. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Mm -hmm. And then they said, nigga, this goddamn content is mean as hell. I said, okay, okay. <laughs> but I say that to say, you get a nigga with some real talent in there talking that goddamn shit, man. Yeah. Saying something mm -hmm. that's going to really be thought provoking and that's really going to help somebody out. Mm -hmm. It'll go viral. Don't be scared, man. Just don't be scared to make quality good content. Don't sure be scared enough. to help nobody. Don't be scared to show no damn love. Don't be scared to show, uh, share your platform. And we ain't got to be in goddamn competition with each other all the damn no. time, mm -hmm. man. Fuck Never. that competition yeah. shit. Mm -hmm. Let's goddamn get it together because guess what? Like what she was just saying earlier, you wonder why we don't have control of it because nigga, we can control it there, uh, together. Mm -hmm. That's right. When I see all y'all niggas in here working together, I mean, this is the, y'all niggas is the comedy Wu-Tang Clan, man. What the fuck? The Comedy Dungeon family, it don't get no better than that. You get a whole bunch of folks coming together, mm -hmm. aggregating their fan bases and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Who's going to stop that? Yeah. Folks got to come in, they got to respect it, and then it's just something from the outside looking in that people can admire. They'll say, you know what? It looked like they working together. Why can't we work together, fellas? Mm -hmm. I see them niggas over there. They getting it. Mm -hmm. So why can't we do what they do and get it too? Mm -hmm. No, because I want to be the end in chief. I got mm -hmm. this, got to be about me. It's all mm -hmm. about me. No, nigga, mm -hmm. let's work together and let's make this shit big and let's got them all win together because it's enough money for everybody. Once mm -hmm. the shit get to popping, you're going to see the money flowing in there. But that's the main thing, camaraderie, cooperation, mm -hmm. and just working together. We could just work together. That's really my main speech and spiel. Mm -hmm. And then also have a little faith behind it all too. Because, nigga, when you go and you say, all right, I ain't getting no damn jab, and you say, I'm about to throw all my damn corporate jobs to the damn wind, your ass better have some goddamn Ooh, faith. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. You better have some goddamn yeah. faith. Yeah. Because shit about to get real. It's about mm -hmm. to get real. Shit about to get real. And you gonna have I'm a steel operator. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You better genuine. get real authentic. It's yeah. about to get real genuine. You're yeah, about to get so <laughs> organic, goddamn. It's about to get organic as hell in this motherfucking thing. <laughs> nigga, nigga, and that's the damn show true, Weez. It's about to get gluten-free wow. in this hey, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, shit! Yeah, I hope y'all ready. 
And that's Jeez. where the greatness happens. And yeah. that's where the money's made. Sure and no. that's when you realize that God is real too. Because sometimes I gave you the game yeah. on the technique. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I see folks do the same thing I do and it didn't work for them. 100%, mm -hmm. bro. I see folks start with me and they didn't finish with me. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's where the grace got to step in. Because it's like I see folks do bigger interviews than me. Nigga, they didn't last longer than Come me. On. Come on. Yeah. You see what then I'm saying? That. Then Come on. That. Come on, yep. man. And mm -hmm. so that that's the main thing. So you got to give God the grace too at the same time. You better believe mm -hmm. in something that's going to show up. Mm -hmm. Something's got to show up. Gotta because it's going to be something that you ain't going to have no answer for. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're going to find yourself in a situation to where, nigga, there's nothing humanly possible yeah. that you can do to defend yourself, protect yourself, or help yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God is going to jump in there and say, all right, here you go. Ooh. Now you know I'm real again. Ooh. So you, go. you got to understand that part, too. Because that's going to be part of the journey. Mm -hmm. And that shit's going to happen over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Until you realize that, okay, it ain't me no more. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Once mm -hmm. you take yourself out of it, you'll start to be a lot more successful as well, mm -hmm. too. Amen. Forgive me. No, no, I, I, yeah, I, I love to hear it. Way. I love it. <laughs> yep. And we'll go to church. Thank now. you. We'll thank, you. Yeah. No, thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's, you for letting me get my shit out of my damn chest. No, 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 thank you. I, no, this ain't going to be the last time you come back here. Yes, sir. We're going to keep on passing mm -hmm. the ball back and forth. Exactly. Now, nigga, I need to get you over there with me and Wick, man. Hey, I got to shout out my podcast partners. If you don't mind. Wicked, what's happening? Ghetto Mafia going crazy. Uh, Break the Bank with CeeLo. He just dropped that. Well, they getting ready to drop that single. They just shot the video to that at the bank the other day. Mm -hmm. That's going crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, my other podcast partner, Turk from the Hot Boys, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. still on fire. He got a new single out going crazy. He just shot the video for that as well. Yeah. He about to drop that. All of that stuff probably might be out by the time the show drop. But uh, them boys is going crazy. I mean, Jody Breeze, what up, though? Choke, no joke. Uh, my New York partner that I love to cuss out every day. <laughs> You know, uh, to everybody that come in, appreciate everybody rocking with me the long way. And, man, we're going to keep this party going in this thing, Jack. There it is, man. Y'all give it up for Beehive. Let's take the seat. Thank y'all, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Uh, really yeah. you, uh, ready. Yes, sir. That was so dope.